Another season of Unfathomed is completed, and it's been an amazing year. Unfathom has been a journey of discovery. We've traveled to some incredible destinations and not only experienced world-class fisheries, but also have taken in the local cultures and traditions. We've met some wonderful people along the way, and the memories that we've made this season will last forever. We've gone through and compiled some of my favorite moments from this season. I hope you enjoy them. Here you go. That's it. I mean, I, I love sail fishing. We have a great sail fishery here in Stewart, Florida, my home waters. We're kind of known more for our dead bait fishery, a traditional dead bait fishery, meaning trolled ballyhoo, um, big teasers, wintertime fishery, rough weather. But what's unique about this area is this time of the year, around June, we get a mass of fish that get out in front of our inlet and affords even the smallest boats the ability to go out there and target these fish. That's him, that's him, that's him. Come up, eat it, eat it again. <laughs> oh my God. There he is. A big oh, one, a big one. <laughs> Too close, it's close. Did this happen all the time? So many fish? <laughs> well, you get in schools and that there was a pack of well, fish. Well, three, huh? That was at least three. The one came up, you broke them yes. off, he broke, and then there was and one. And I saw another one, yeah. You see the yeah, yeah, up? I saw that one, yeah. Yeah, there was a so whole pack three. of fish there. And this time of the year, it's crazy that this time of the year we're known. It's crazy, like for two hours, we're doing like yeah. nothing now. Boom, well, back we moved to back. shallow, and we just found an area where they're at. Okay. It's just developing a so, pattern. So that means I should be there closer. The schools of bait here, that's why they're around these schools of bait. But he did a great show, huh? <laughs> oh, he gave us a show like no other. He gave a great show. He's a big dude, huh? Right, so you get a better look at him here, right? Oh. Oh my god. <laughs> Isn't that cool? And right now he lost his color, but did you yeah. see when he was jumping? No, yeah, he was so, like this, yeah. this like neon purple blue. Yeah. For the show, buddy. Impressive, right? Impressive. First time ever. And the color is beautiful. Look at that. I'm close. Big old eye. Oh, Before today, just on TV, man. <laughs> Alright. Perfect. Thank you, man. Yes. Here we go. I'm gonna let him go. Woohoo! Oh, buddy. <laughs> How great was that? Awesome. Action, action, action. Yeah. The 
Mississippi Delta Flyway is a path that these birds take from Canada down into Mexico. Venice, Louisiana happens to fall just dead smack right in that flyway, which makes it such a great destination for duck hunting. Um, it has the perfect environment for these birds to stop off on making their way down in the winter time, and the timing is just perfect. This is the time that they're here. This is when the duck hunting is some of the best, and you have so many opportunities to get an easy limit every day when you're in Venice. So we're in a wildlife management refuge, and it was interesting, we see all those mud boats running around, you said they're not allowed in here. Yeah, this is water-cooled engine only. So we have a, a true water-cooled outboard on the back of this one, so we can be back in the pond with that, but you cannot run an air-cooled motor back in here. It's illegal, you'll get tickets, what have you. So they try to give the birds a little bit of a rest, because those mud boats can run pretty anyway. much anywhere they want to go. Yeah. So the birds never get a rest. The shooting is done by noon, we have to be out of here by one o'clock. Is that for everybody hunting or just the wildlife? And that's the manager there here to single out front. Let's get him. Get him, George. Get him. Nice shot! <laughs> uh, the one thing I didn't know about George is uh, how good of a shot he was, to be honest with you. He kept telling me he'd only been duck hunting one time, and uh, he swung across and came around from the front on a group of teal that came in, and he shot a true double with a single shot. Look at that <laughs> Give me something. You just shot a double! <laughs> <laughs> Blind squirrel gets a nut every now and then. The teal is, is a bird that uh, is the smaller of the waterfowl, and uh, they, they come across in flocks generally, uh, you know, from five to upwards of a hundred at a time when they come in, and they fly exceedingly fast, and they can change direction like you would not believe. So just when you think you have them, you take the proper lead and you shoot, they turn back another direction, and then you're trying to follow back up. But, uh, um, and I'm, I've never turned down a teal. It's one of the better eating birds out there and uh, I think they're a blast to shoot. You are uh, every bit as good a hunter as you are a fisherman, <laughs> brother, because you made some incredible shots today. A true double with a single shot. Uh, that was two today. I had one and you had one. You just don't see that very often, man. That's a lot of fun to come out here in the morning and do this and then have the ap afternoon to be able to go out there and catch some fish. Oh, the sun's coming out. It's about the right timing. Probably go out there and get some sight fishing reds going on. <laughs> no better day. It's a beautiful thing, man. Thanks so much, brother. Thank I appreciate you, it. Thanks for enjoying awesome that with morning. me. <laughs> Yes, yes, twitch, twitch. Got it, yes, nice, that was awesome. <laughs> Keep out of that. Oh, that was fantastic, nice cast. That's so exciting. God, it's so cool to see him like that. He's just inching along. Ooh. I think Venice is one of those locations where if you're an angler, you have to come and visit once. You have to experience this type of fishery to, to experience this type of sight fishing. Um, it's just different than any other place I've traveled to before. Um, and like I said, the fish are so willing to take a bait. It, it, the big thing here is finding the fish. So many times, so many destinations that you go to, you have to find the fish and then you have to, it, finding them's half of it and then you gotta convince them to bite. Here, if you find them, you're gonna get the bite. He's working you on that light tackle. <laughs> there he is, right there. That's a great fish. Brother, I take a lot of people sight fishing, and I can tell you that it's not easy to do, and you've done it with me a couple times now, and you tend to make it happen every time. That is a pretty, pretty red fish. Yeah, you pointed him out. Great job, dude. Really good job. Yeah, look how. Orange. Look at that jig head. <laughs> Woo! Son. That is a thick fish. Look at that beautiful tail. See how nice and that, that is color. just. Every one looks different. That's the crazy thing. Every one of them is different. These fish are it's lit like up. It's the color of the strap almost. Yeah. Sun's come out. You know, that they've had some fronts come through. Right now they're lit up and they're just ready to feed. And that's what they do. They just get all lit up. I tell you, there's nothing better than sight casting. Dude, that was awesome. That's Great amazing. presentation. I mean, it's just, that is a thick, thick fish.
la cuenta. When you go to pay, how much? Oh, how, how much? much? How much? We step out on the tarmac and this helicopter is sitting there and this is the beginning of a week-long adventure. We're going to take this helicopter from Guatemala City out to the coast of this top of to Pacific Fins. I've done this trip before on fixed wing, but this is something totally different. Stepping up into the helicopter, you put your seatbelt on, you get your headsets on, the blades fire up and that thing starts to rumble and it, and it all comes to life. From October till uh, May, it can be any day. According to Miami University statistics, there's no difference between any month. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's great. Ends up being a matter of angler's luck. <laughs> We're known for the terrific selfish bite Guatemala has. Numbers will average around 20 bites per day per boat. That's what makes Guatemala such an interesting fishery. And the science behind it is just quite simple. Our underwater topography is just perfect to harvest bait. I think what I love most about Pacific Sailfish is their aggression. With that size comes power, and they, they show that power in their jumps. You first hook that fish, he's going nuts back there. The captain's turning, making the turn. You're trying to you know, keep the belly of the line out, and you want to keep that fish on the surface. You don't want him to go down. You want him to stay up. You want him to jump, exert himself, tire himself out. This fish is lit up, has everything to offer in one fish. There's not many fish in the ocean that match the energy of the Pacific sailfish. The oxygen level below 100 feet of water here is very low. They've determined that. They've done research and they figured that out. And what that does is that concentrates all the bait and the predator fish at the top of the water column, putting them within range of your spread of bait. This is surreal. It is surreal. Look at him. He's just right. happy. All right, now you got to show me what you got. Oh, no, boy. <laughs> Strip it. Strip. Got it. I have very limited uh, history with bonefish. I've caught a couple down in Key Biscayne soaking some shrimp, but never really sight casting to them, and never on a fly. What a great fish. Yeah. First one on fly. The first one on fly? First one on fly.
47 years of waiting, you're in the prime area to catch a blue marlin every time something happens. I don't care if somebody just makes a noise. You, your interest is so sparked. Your ears are up like a, a dog just standing guard. That clicker goes off and your, your neck snaps back to where it hurts the next day. Oh, left chain, left chain, that's him. That's him, pull that chain in. Left chain, pull it in. Get it in. Oh my God. What wow. George, make a turn down C for me. Left turn, let's clear everything. Hell yeah, did you what see him bite. crash that what teaser? A yeah. What a bite! Watch your line, Jackson, hold watch up, your hold line. Up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Part of you doesn't want to be the guy with the rod in your hand that he hits because there's a lot of pressure there. Everybody's counting on you. Everybody's looking at you for you to perform. So when he hit the rod that, and Jimmy was holding it, I felt a sense, a little sense of relief. I mean, 47 years I waited for this and, and Jimmy's holding the rod and I wasn't disappointed. I was like, oh, okay, I got the best guy on it. You know, he's caught more than, than all of us combined. So he's the guy to do it. He's the guy to close, close the deal. And it was, it was pretty sweet to watch. Safe to swim with him if I jump in? Yeah, you'll be fine. Fo photos or? Absolutely. Well, it's our, my first one to the boat, so I'd love to get some. I'd love to see him in the water, too. I think it's. A uh, different appreciation for the animal, that's yeah. for sure. Coming up, there, there she is, is again. Coming, oh, yeah! 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 Oh, let him go! I, I had it set in my head that the first marlin that I was part of, I wanted to get in the water with it. And I was, I, I grew up admiring Jose Wahebe. He would always get in the water with, with fish. And I, I love to be in the water. Um, and I just had it set in my head. When I caught one, I wanted to get in there. I wanted to see him in the water and be with him. So Jimmy had the opportunity to reel it in, but I wanted to take that chance. I wanted to take that opportunity to get in the water with this blue marlin. Go. I got her. Hell yeah, look at this. Look at George swimming with it. There's a surreal moment where the billfish kind of just looks at you with this massive eye. And it, he almost kind of settled down when he realizes that I wasn't something that was there to, to eat him, you know? I don't know what he thought, but he calmed down long enough for me to, to reach down and take that hook out and just swim alongside him for a moment and then just get the release. Just in awe. It's a magical moment. I've waited a very Woo! long time for, and uh, it was definitely a surreal experience. And telepathy is real. <laughs> okay, ready? Okay, ready? You're not seeing my sock. My sock's out of film. You see my sock in the film. These aren't the socks I wanted to wear. <laughs> Oh, wow, right where you passed, it was a hell of a hole. Look at, oh, oh, come on. Tell me you got him. Yeah, boy. Oh, yeah. Jackson, 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 Jackson. Are you talking really quiet? Really? Did she talk quieter than I did during the? Big shark. Lots of these out here. Unfortunately. Oh, oh. Ooh, good job. Wet. Welcome back to Venice, George. I have to use this one because the parachute for this one is bigger. Good idea. 
because my flesh right is just for my weight, yeah, and this wow. is for a tendon. Look. George, how much wind knots you put in the line, man? A couple wind knots in there? Yeah, I see three so oh, far. you gave it to me with knots. Ah, nah. You gave it to me with knots. That couldn't have been me. <laughs> flying my flying heat, my flying heat. foot. Me getting slapped in the face. Oh, the pen died. It's an omen, my pen died. Professor, does that mean something? Today cannot get, uh, can only get, God, can't get, can't, can't go, it's whatever I'm trying to say. I know, because you're like, redfish, red, 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 rum, red, rum. Let's see, hey, Captain, what kind of lady are you using right now? Sorry.